All right, guys, we are back to the garden. Um, it's been a year, obviously, um, since we've been here. We've got some squash, some zucchini squash, some spaghetti squash. We've got some tomato plants over here, and we're gonna talk irrigation today. Um, last year, I had an irrigation for part of the year that was on a three foot tall stem. I just took a regular 360 degree sprinkler and put it on top of a three foot tall stem so it just towered over all the plants and it just watered everything. Just, it did a really great job keeping all these plants um, well watered. Well, with that, I also created a bad environment. Good environment in one case, kind of bittersweet because I had an aphid problem and I'll put a link to that video um, up here up top. With the aphid problem, that brought in a wasp and hornet problem. The wasps and um, hornets were having a grand old time at the aphid buffet that I had put on here. So I decided that um, I was gonna change it up a little bit. I was watering everything. I was watering a sidewalk, I was watering the fence, I was watering cars parked over off to the side of the road. I was watering part of the lawn, that was okay. But here on the homestead, I try to conserve where I can and keeping our water costs down is one of those ways that we can help save money and use them for other things like, you know, traveling in our RV, things like that. So today I'm just gonna go over with you quickly on how I set this system up. It's very simple, just went to the local hardware store, picked up some of this drip irrigation pipe, um, all the fittings, it's super easy. All you need to do is just cut um, at the different lengths of the hose where you want to um, put your different fittings. You can buy different heads that go where your sprinkler would go and they've got little ports on top that you can run um, different amounts of hose, two, three, four, five, six. Um, in, the, in the system that I have going on, I'm just gonna run um, just two hoses off the top of my head and then I'll run some inline drip irrigation um, and I'll just route the hose um, amongst the garden plants as you see here. Um, really simple design, anybody can do it. Um, you know, I come from a landscape irrigation background. Um, it's something I did in my younger years, but anybody can do this, it's super cheap. I did this whole setup for less than $20, picking up the hose, the fittings, and like I said, it's just a more conservative way to make sure that you aren't wasting water, that water is getting where it needs to go, and you're not creating a environment for aggressive insects to come in and uh, take over your vegetable garden. Okay, so I've already got an existing line that I've ran around that area there, and it has a drip irrigation on this end here, but we are going to make a cut in the hose right here at this plant, and we're gonna install a inline drip head on that part right there. So I'm just simply gonna grab the line right here and cut it. Let me clean that up a bit. And now I have my two pieces and I'll just install the inline. So now we're gonna install one of these inline ones on the hose. And it just twists on there. Nothing complicated, just like that. And we'll just lay that in the soil. And let it do its thing. I'm just gonna measure this out. I'll just hook it on here. Uh, and once you have that hooked on, We'll just wind this out. <clears throat> and I'm just giving this a, a relative distance. Kind of roughing it out here. Giving myself a little bit of extra room. And I'll just snip it off right there. And that'll be that. Very efficient way to do your watering. All right, I'm just gonna stick this.
we're going to cut the line again and we're going to introduce this for this tomato plant here. Actually, it's a squash, but we're going to put this in line here. Just like that. And now that's installed and ready to go next to our squash plant here. It's got a little indicator on top, a little plus, a little minus. You loosen it and that will give you more water and you tighten it and that will give you less water. All right, that should be the right one. And like I said, you've got these little adjuster nozzles, so you can just twist these. See? Tighten it, and the water is off. Gently twist it on, and you get a little bit of water. You really crank on that sucker. You can get it really throwing some water. We're just going to keep it nice and low. We don't need anything crazy. It's like irrigation Legos. It's just super simple not expensive to get into anybody can do it that's what i enjoy about it looks like that one needs to be adjusted just a little bit so we'll just tighten that down just like that i'm just gonna zip tie this See how that works. All right, guys, I really enjoyed doing this one today. Um, super easy to do, drip irrigation, anybody can do it. It's really simple. You can check down below. I'll put links to some of the products we used. Um, you can use those links at no extra cost to you when you do those help support the channel here on the homestead, and I do appreciate that. Um, if you're uh, into gardening things like that consider subscribing give us a like below and uh, like I said this is super easy to do you just cut the hose to length where you want it you put your fittings on you adjust it by tightening and loosen it's super easy anybody can do this drip irrigation and as you can see it's not getting the whole garden wet it's just getting those localized points of interest water and that's what I want. So a couple times a day, this will water for maybe five, 10 minutes, depending on what the garden needs. And I'm not broadcasting all this water onto the sidewalks and the fence and areas that don't need it. And I'm hoping that this will help keep my bug population down too. I'm hoping I won't be creating this giant rainforest. If you're looking into conserving water around the homestead, drip irrigation is definitely the way to go. So um, give us a like, hit that subscribe button and check out our latest videos right here. We appreciate you watching and we'll see you on the next one. And the dogs around here just don't ever shut up. Especially that little son of a over there. I like my Crocs. I don't care what my wife says. My wife can't stand them. She mocks me all day long. I can't wear my shoes or boots in the house and I'm sick and tired of having to unlace my boots and untie my shoes every time I want to go in the house. These are easy to take on and off. I do. I don't care what she says. I like my Crocs. I'm not worried about planes in the background.
You can check out a link to our latest video right here. Cars, lots of cars. <sighs> I kind of like them. I have this safety strap right here. Then when I want to go in the house, because I can't wear these in the house, I just pull my little safety strap off and slide my foot out. And now I go, and then when I come back out, I put my croc back on, and I'm good to go. I might as well have moved next to a fucking freeway because I got more damn cars and airplanes than I know what to fucking do with. Do you need a dog? I've got plenty of neighbors around here. I'd love to give away their dogs because they don't do anything with them. Laugh if you want to, but I think they're kind of stylish.